Sucio Talk Podcast is the third anniversary of this show. So I just want to take a quick second and shout out everyone who tuned in over the years, who's been watching, listening, championing, loving it. It truly was a journey to get here. This podcast has had many iterations. Audio only first, because of course, I interview chefs mainly. People that are not used to being interviewed could be a little awkward, right? Didn't want to make it awkward. I'm also awkward as fuck. I'm always touching my face. My mom's like, don't touch your face. But I do it anyway. <clears throat> So third anniversary of Sucio Talk, I'm excited. Uh, as I said, I'm going to do this forever, so there'll be a fourth anniversary next year. Uh, I hope to take it up a notch and do more of a live situation and celebration of this podcast. We'll see what happens. Uh, maybe I'll still have, maybe I'll still do it, you know? It's not like time's running out over here. I still got next month. I could throw a party. It doesn't have to be on the date of the anniversary. So uh, I'll keep thinking about that and we'll see. But the goal is to go live at some point. We're going to get into a situation where we're doing this regularly live. Because, um, you know, I want to get the face-to-face -face in. I want to get good at doing live shows. I think I uh, got it in me to do speeches. Motivational. Uh, not in terms of purposely being motivational, but telling stories. And hopefully from there, someone can find some value from that, right? Out here in Oakland. It's just crazy out here, but I guess it always has been, right? So when I first started this show, I made a point not to focus on the negative things in life, and that's what we're going to do on this show. Okay? The only thing I'll say is that I'm not down with innocent people getting hurt in no way, shape, or form. And that's it. That's all I'm going to fucking say. I don't have time to focus on this negative shit it's eating everyone alive. It's out there. But I'm going to focus on God. I'm going to focus on the future of this show, me and my family, and everything I got to do to get to the next level and bring this show to the next level and bring more stories out and make sure everyone out there, while you're doing what you do when you listen to this show, take a shower, work out, Drive a car, make koji, inoculate rice, salt ferment radishes, stinky, read a cookbook, read a top 50 list, best restaurant, Michelin, James Beard. By the way, there's James Beard right now. James Beard nomination, you can go on, uh, I think it's jbf.com. And I got the, I got the internet right here, so I could just check it out. <clears throat> JBF 2023. Hold on. What's pasando? I think this, uh, see what goes here. Crazy. All right. Well, guess I can't look it up. Maybe I can look it up over here. No, we won't waste our time. We will not waste our time. Yes, we will. James Beard. You can go ahead and nominate Sucio Talk at James Beard. I believe a nomination is 85 bucks or you could plead for the uh, financial hardship option and go ahead and vote on your favorite chef 
your favorite media representative, cookbook authors. Last year I did the whole JBF, James Beard Award, found James Beard Foundation Award play by play. I watched the whole thing. And this year I want to do the same thing. I was talking to Harold Villarosa about possibly doing the play by play with him. You know, it'd be cool. Like Cameron and Mace are doing it. It is what it is right now. I would definitely love to to have more people on the podcast in a more regular way and not make it this big thing where it's always like, you know, what do I say? What do we do? I just want to start a community, right? So people just feel comfortable coming on the show multiple times uh, and don't feel like they have to wait uh, till they have something to say to come on the show. Because the more FaceTime you get with the young cooks, the patrons of the restaurant, right? The people that I want to listen to this podcast that eventually will listen to this podcast. You know what I'm saying? To this show. Start calling it a show. So that's why I'm trying to get it out there, guys. And that's why the James Beard helps out a lot. James Beard nominations 2024. Yeah, jamesbeard.org. Enter the 2024 James Beard Awards. And then you, you can basically... November 30th, 2023 at midnight Eastern time is the cutoff for the 2024 James Beard Award nominations. So go ahead and check out jamesbeard.org. I'm not being sponsored by them. This is not, not sponsored, okay? I'm advocating for myself over here. I'm advocating for Sucio Talk. If you like this fucking show and you want this show to grow, get on your goddamn computer. Get on this website, pick a link off whatever YouTube podcast I got out there that you like, and let these motherfuckers know what Sucio Talk is all about. All I got to do is get in the room. Once I get in the room, that's all that matters. I'll take care of the rest myself. And at the end of the rainbow... I'll interview Thomas Keller and Daniel Balud in Madison Square Garden. And that's what's going to happen. So, anyway, moving forward over here. I got a little script. Uh, I almost opened a restaurant in San Francisco. Thank God I got the fuck out of there. Blessing in disguise. And I got blessed with a new position that I will share with you guys. Just looking for my notes over here. Uh, later on, I'm drinking the Doka beer from uh, Doka beer, Doka beer, Doka beer from Oakland. It's a milk stout, cardamom, green peppercorn flavor. This was the the beer that was paired yesterday at Hail Villarosa's dinner that he did a, a pop up at Moza Gather in San Francisco. Shout out to Angelina Hong. She's also done podcasts, or uh, I'm sorry, pop-ups with, what's his name? Spencer Horvitz of Hadim. All right. So look at what's happening here. Okay, I see you. Here we go. Uh, so more episodes coming soon. As I was saying before, um, looking for my calendar here. Here we go. I got a calendar link. Calendly, Calendly link that you guys can ask me for. <laughs> I'll hit you up, send it to you. I got one, two, three, four, five scheduled podcasts for the month of December already. Okay. Tuesday the 5th, I'll be talking to Chef Raquel Goldman. Chef Raquel Goldman. Uh, and David Susio, I'll be talking to her on Tuesday the 5th. That means the podcast will probably have a turnaround day, you know, time of one day. So like Wednesday the 6th of December is when that'll come out. That's when you can probably expect that. That's my goal is to just get it done because I got the help of AI. More to come on that later. Um, so we got <clears throat> Jeremy Jarman, who's a pastry chef at Truffle Shuffle. Sweetheart of a guy. 
helped me out on do my first pop up ever at Caviar Co in Tiburon, California. Shout out to Petra Higby. Uh, shout out to Jeremy. I just saw him in Long Beach. By the way, I just did a dinner at the Boathouse on the Bay in Long Beach. Probably the last one I'll do for for a while. But shout out to John Morris, the inventor of the sports bar. Because that's going to be attached to his name forever. Uh, Shout out to this restaurant down there in Long Beach called Marlena. I know they're going to get a Michelin star at some point. Marlena will get a Michelin star in Long Beach. I'm calling it here. I'm calling it now. And that is going to shift the tides of the dining scene at Long Beach. Because if you think about it all, the old white people who own the boats are going to die pretty soon. Okay. And then (laughs) it's inevitable. You know what I'm saying? We're all, you know, hey, hey, it is what it is, you know? So the dining scene will change in Long Beach and you will start to see more Michelin star restaurants there as the time goes on. So we'll be the the same thing and Palm Springs, same thing. Uh, and, and then as you see Michelin move into different states, they went to Florida, they're in Chicago now. So I feel like that just makes more opportunity for greatness, more opportunity for people for kids who are unjaded by the maliciousness of some kitchens in this world that can go back into the world of cooking and succeed and want to succeed. It was for a while that no one wanted to be the sous chef because you made less than the cooks and you worked more. Uh, Also happened to be the same thing for the GM, general manager. Even if you're making like 110, your servers are making way more than that. And so it makes you feel kind of like a chump, you know, because you're like, I got to manage these people. I got more responsibility than anyone. And you ain't getting paid right, you know? Things are not always the way they seem. All right, so that was Jeremy Jarman. Oh, he also stopped by the boathouse because we we did the similar dinner, uh, and he cooked for Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis, who I know I think are canceled right now, so I hope their dinner went great. (laughs) But they're still booking shit, but hey, whatever, bro. It is what it is, you know? Um, We got... Chris Yang in the house, El Chino Grande, Piglet SF. He's coming here. Uh, Actually, we're doing at his restaurant. It'll be Tuesday the 12th, December. So that'll be December 13th when that podcast comes out. Then we got Erica Castillo. Erica Castillo was a, a CDP at High Felicia. A CDP at High Felicia, Chef de Parti, who worked the station. I got that interview to, through Salase Doce. And so we're going to crack this story wide open and get to listen firsthand to see what the fuck happened at High Felicia. That shit, that, that restaurant has a Reddit page, for Christ's sake. I don't understand what the, what the fuck's going on. But we're going to learn firsthand what happened. Uh, I don't like to speculate. Even if you read an article, you still got to speculate a little bit. You still got to make sure you know all the details because maybe those articles, they'll take you down. They'll take you down. So Chris Yang, shout out to you. El Chino Grande, going to go see him at on Tuesday the 12th. Past that, Erika Castillo. Then we got Sharif Pratt coming out of Vallejo, I believe. Uh, also Salase Doce, shout out to her for hooking it up with all these chefs. Way more to come. Trying to talk to everyone out here. Trying to get guests that I've had on before come back on. As you know, we're always ready to chill out here, uh, and and talk some shit, you know. And it's all fun in the end, you know. We ain't trying to make no enemies out here. Uh, I've realized in the past. 
year, I think I was in a dark place and I might have said some shit that was out of pocket. And that's okay. You know, I forgive myself. So I don't care, to be honest with you, what anybody thinks of this show or what I say. Um, I always say with the utmost, utmost respect, you know what I'm saying? I'm never out here attacking no one like super personally or hope or wishing that anybody has any harm put upon them. Uh, unless you're rude to me out and about, you know what I mean? Then, then I got to let you know. I can't, I can't just let you walk away without letting you know you trespass in the most calm manner, you know, with respect always. So, here we go. So more episodes coming soon. Five in December. I'm trying to book more. I'm booking like 60 days out. Also talking to Latina G from, that's her Instagram name. She's in Napa. Uh, got a, she's, on a, she's got a radio station, I believe. I don't know the, the radio station. What is it? Latina G. Here we go. Gabriela Fernandez, public figure, Hella Latina, Mega Mix, Media, Monday through Friday, 7 to 10. Creator of the Big Sip series, co creator Latinx Wine Summit, hashtag WEF40, at Wine Enthusiast. She's all over it. She's followed by Chef Rogelio Garcia, Mr. Street. So you know she's got some cred around here. We actually talked about her on the podcast with with Street. Shout out to Lita and Walnut Creek. If you haven't been there, check it out. Uh, moving right along. So went to the Northeast, spent some time in Vermont, drove a Jeep. It was amazing. Apparently there's some Jeep culture. If you have a Jeep, it means you're part of a family. So you wave to each other, you say hello. I'm not really sure why, but I did it anyway. Um, a lot of dinners in home I've been doing, and I got to say, I think it's time for me to do that less and do venues and pop-ups at places that have kitchens more. I'm not saying that the personal catering isn't fun. And it isn't bringing memories to people that will, you know, remember that forever. At the end of the day, you're bringing a three Michelin star trained cook into your house, you know, to put it down and feed your whole family dinner. That's not an experience that just comes about uh, very often. So Truffle Shuffle makes that happen for everyday people, you know. And so shout out to them for allowing me to transition with them, do these events. We did an event at Charles Crew called Napa Palooza, where I got to debut my pop-up, my traveling restaurant, my concept for what will be a brick and mortar someday called Muerte. Muerte. It's the death of what you thought it was. You know? The death of what you think it's going to be. Sometimes people try to tell you how it is. And I've realized that most of those people never done it. I'm over here. I done it, B. Climb to the top. One of the best kitchens in the world. One of the best teams in the world. Still going. Chichio. Chef Scott fucking, what, what else he got? He's got uh, Lovsky. You know? He's killing it. All these dudes, man, they just like, they keep going. And you got to respect it, baby. Shout out to everyone succeeding out there. The big homies, the little homies. 
This is how I want to dress from now on. God damn, I want to, I want to look good. You know what I mean? I feel good. I'm out here. Mm. Little chain, get a chain. Yeah. Susio's here. Susio Talk Podcast. So Muerte Pop Up. Boricua. Fine dining. Right? So I did I did like croquettes, but instead of fish, I did arroz con pollo. Arroz con pollo croquettes. Right? So I cook some rice. Uh and so and then I mix it with some I kept it real starchy. And I mix it with some sofrito. Uh medium grain rice. By the way, I cook like Straight up white Spanish white rice. Mixed it with chicken cooked in sofrito. Made balls out of it, breaded it, fried it. A little special sauce on there, some little ketchup mayo, some little cupy, cupy ketchup, you know? Uh, and then I got a goat and olive empanadilla. Uh, so I got goat leg, sear that shit, carrots, onions, celery. Right? Olives, juice of the olives. Right? Deglaze, Welch's grape juice. Shut the fuck up. Deglaze, Welch's grape juice. Do what the fuck I say. All right? That's what it is. Delicious. Bay leaf. Sofrito. Oregano. Let that shit stew. Pick it. Chop it. Put it inside plantillas. Then you got empanadillas, goat and olive empanadillas, delicious. What I did was is uh, I, you know, sometimes, most times those things come with a dipping sauce, but I glazed it. I did like you would a wing, you know, like you would an Asian wing. Glaze that shit. Bah, peppers, bah, chicken, bah, chew. flavor. Um... It was delicious. And then, ¿qué era el tercero? No me acuerdo. Okay, I can't remember the third canopy. All right, moving forward. Uh, oh, uh, sweet platanos and caviar. Um, it was the first time I actually saw that. I didn't even think of that myself. First time I saw that was a snail bar. I'm sure he saw it somewhere else. Uh, not, not saying he didn't invent it. Whoa, whoa, now. Relax now. Um, but I, I'm, I'm sure someone along the way fucking has done it before. Nobody knows who invented caviar on sweet platanos, who invented it. Can someone tell me 510-463-1145? That's an actual phone number that you can call and leave a message on. And I will play it on this podcast. I keep saying that shit. Okay. 510-463-1145. That is the number. Text it. Leave a message. I'll play it on the show. Ask a question. If you want to promote your pop-up on there, go ahead. It's free. It's a free marketing tool for you. You want a place where you got a commercial? Boom, right there. Oh, David, you haven't had an episode in a long time. I don't know when you're going to play. You're right. You're right, I haven't. But we're going to up that. As I always say, trying to do what I can to get some guests here, get some organization in my life. Opening that restaurant and not getting paid at all to do it really put, set me behind. All right. So if you're doing something, never believe someone that they're going to pay you. Make sure they pay you. Okay. And that way you don't get screwed. And I have to jump on a plane to the Northeast and do events all over the world, all over the U.S. No, it was great. It was amazing. It was the, the best transition I ever had in my life. And I landed on my feet, too. I came back. Came back from all that. Guess what happened? Guess what happened? You know that place? You know that place, OpenAI? This guy right here is the executive chef of OpenAI, son. 
That shit's real. You understand? That app you're using, ChatGPT, I'm the chef there. Okay? I'm out here, and I'm going to make that shit the best motherfucking dining scene you ever seen in a corporate level, dog. I'm a corporate chef now. That's why I got that's why I got gear. You know what I mean? That's why I got the gear. Got this shit put turned up to 10. Turn it up to 10. You know what I mean? So That's what I'm talking about. We're going to get there, guys. We're going to get to the big time. We're going to be on Theo Vaughn's podcast. We're going to be on your mom's house podcast. We're going to be on Bobby Lee's podcast. We're going to go out to eat at Michelin dinners with comedians and film that shit. And it's going to be hilarious, dog. And your boy Susio is going to bring that to you. Okay. I'm working on it. All right. All right. What else? Um, so I got a full-time job now. All right. Uh, that's going to change the course of the podcast a little bit, but the goal is that now with this stationary schedule, I'm not running all over the place. I can make it so I can really focus on this podcast, right? I can really focus on this show. And also, I have the opportunity of a lifetime to build a dining facility, a world-class dining facility in one of the most important companies of this generation, and I don't know if you've been following what's going on with the open AI situation, but the CEO, Sam Altman, was fired a day after I got hired. And it didn't, it's not coincide. <laughs> it does not coincide. I don't know. It's just weird that that shit happened. And now there's like a public battle for the, the tippy top of open AI. And it's it's crazy, bro. It's it's definitely crazy. Uh just to watch it unfold, you know, uh online and see everyone's reactions to it. I'm sure they're gonna come to a amiable decision, do what they gotta do, get it back on track and start doing that uh you know, the ethical AI business. That way we can grow with it. And it doesn't outgrow us. And we can use it for good. Uh, don't use it to be lazy. Use it to help you become better. That's that's the way that you should use ChatGPT. I use that shit. It helps me edit these shows. I'm not an editor. You know? I got to make this shit happen. And one of the ways that I do that is using that. So definitely check that out. It's a great program. All right. I'm looking to do more regular shows. So I just got to even out the schedule and see what happens. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a Wednesday night at six, you know, just a, a early show. Six to eight. Talk shit, go eat somewhere. And that's it. Susio talk at a restaurant. I'll make I'll make a reservation every Wednesday. That'll be dope. That'll be dope. Um, what else? See, I'm just thinking of great ideas up here. I should be doing that shit. Should be doing now that I saw how it how it was done yesterday at Moza Gather yesterday, there was a lot of influencers. And man, it's crazy when you see like 16 influencers in the same room. That they're just taking pictures. They know the drill. They're having a good time. Uh, but they're working, dog. They're out. They're working. You know, don't think for one second that they're not going home that night 
and editing those those pictures and videos or spending a lot of time doing it. All right. It's not it's not as easy as it looks. It's easy because they've been doing it or they do it right. You know, it's easy because they've been doing it for a long time. They put the time in. You know, everybody always looks at the success and they're like, oh, it's so easy for them. They've been putting 10 years. Some people put in five years. And then there's that multi-talented people that just do it. You know, they just like, they crush it. And there's no right way except your way, right? Um, There's no right way except your way. Well, that's going to get me in trouble. This fucking milk style is delicious. Green peppercorn cardamom. I take that off. I've been listening to myself way too much on those headphones. Ah, we're out here. Susio Talk. Third anniversary. Doing the show. All right. So. The last dinner I did, there was a taxidermy lion that this woman hunted in Africa, the Serengeti. She hunted that shit. She shot it right below the ear, and I learned some things about lions. When a lion ages, their hair is black, not white. Their hair becomes black. Uh, And when an alpha male ages out or gets crushed by another dude in the in the in the group the herd (laughs) the the squad um they just leave him to die and he's too slow to hunt he's too slow to be able to hunt the four-legged animals that run fast as shit so all those things against him i was kind of sad when she killed this animal but then again i'm just like yo he's gonna die of starvation they die of starvation son and so that's why scar scar is old as fuck his mane was all black this lion had like half black mane you know so there that is little story little story time for you socio talk getting weird 10.05 10.05 p.m. What are we doing? I don't know. Uh, ben Suko Collabo. I guess I didn't talk to you guys about my, my Northeast trip because I wrote it. Like, I wrote the show, but I don't think I did it. Um, but, yeah, I ended up going to... Um, I ended up going to the Northeast... And doing a lot of private dinners out there. And I I had fun. I had a lot of fun. I ate a gift horse in Providence with Ben Sukel. The Squid Mac was fucking bomb. It was like a it was like a literal um Big Mac, but a Squid Mac. And it was really good. Uh, it was a really good dish. So I'll be back to Rhode Island soon enough. Shout out to the um continued support and all the love uh for all the restaurants out here in the bay area and the world um it's you know it's hard sometimes to justify going out especially when all the the problems of the world are going down you know but we got to we got to still keep living out here you know I'm I'm talking to you, you know, I'm talking to all my babies out there. Gotta stay sharp. Um You also gotta drink water. You know, I'm just looking at this sexy tall glass of water over here. Make sure you stay hydrated. I'm going to Stay put for a second for the next, you know, three to six months until I make sure I dial in this new gig, this new job, this new position, this new opportunity. I go in there and crush it. I know I will. 
at the same time crushed the game in the podcast world. Uh, doing this show, one of the most popular food podcast sh- shows out there. Uh, the other show is uh, Chef's PSA. Shout out to Chef Andre Natera. I'll say it right here. One of the it's one of the best chef podcasts. It's a it's a good way of doing it, you know. So we all got our own shit. We're gonna be doing a collabo pretty soon. I know we keep saying that, but hey, if we keep saying that, we manifest that shit. We make it happen. All right. I don't have anybody that works on this show except for me. So I think what I'm going to do is diversify that a little bit and get some people to help me so I can further this. I need a publicist. I need an editor. I need a YouTube manager. I need a cameraman. Uh, You know, the works. So I can make this my job and I can do it for a living and I can just, you know, be that dude who's above the law because of the following that I have. Be so um, unabashedly unapologetic, if that's even a two words or probably mean the same fucking thing, but it doesn't matter at this point. Because we're just shout outs and rambles. What are you going to do? Uh, but I feel good. feel good dressing this way. I feel good. I got an inside pocket. It's my Calvin Klein suit. I wore it at a wedding. It's the booth. The podcast booth. And what else? I miss my family. I miss my, I miss my cousin Natalie. I miss my aunt. Titi. Miss my mom's. No. I don't see my family very often. I started thinking about that the other day. And it kind of hurts me. So I think that that influenced this decision to work at this place where I can have some kind of stability. So I could set some time aside to see them. Uh, You know what I thought the other day? Our forefathers, or America's forefathers, were the first millennials. You know, Britain was like, yo, you got to pay this tax. And George Washington was like, I don't want to. (laughs) So he's like, yo, I'm going to get on this boat and sail over. We're going to go over here. Because we don't want to do that. You know, fucking lazy ass motherfuckers. And they were like, fine, go over there and do what you got to do. And he was like, fine, bitch go to fucking new land make this my own you know that George Washington stepped down as president he was gonna run as long as until he died if not imagine if we had a president until he died that'd be crazy bro what a position man what a fucking position I wouldn't want it I don't want to be no president man it's too much, bro. I stay in my own lane. This is my lane. Sucio talk. History of the world. All in my brain. Thinking about the different possible outcomes that could happen. If I just sit down and think and write. If I look to the future and want to do well, what must I do? Who must I see? Where must I go? Which seeds shall I sow? What harvest will I grow? Boom. Motherfucking poetry out here, dork. Uh, <clears throat> grateful to be here. Another year of life, I turned 34. 34 years old. I'm not old. I'm just getting started. You know what I mean? Still feel young as fuck. Still feel dumb as fuck sometimes. So you just got to take it in stride and do what you can. Move along. And uh, try not to beat yourself up too hard for things that you can't control. Or things that you've done and you regret. 
just make sure you think about those things and how not to repeat them. Look inside and see what you need to change. Everyone needs a good change, you know? Not everyone's perfect. That means you could change a little bit. You don't have to change all the way. Nobody's asking you to compromise who you are. But there are certain things about us that we could make, just tweak and make a little bit better. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with saying that to your friends or saying that to your family if they need it. Because who else is going to tell them? No one cares. No one cares about you, really. We're all alone. And it's difficult to think that. But it's the truth. And the more we try to be together, the happier we'll be. So enough already. Come on, B. That's going to be a short right there. <laughs> that little bit right there. You like that? Just deep in my thoughts, you know? Just exercising the the thing that is that. My brain. I know there's a prophet in there somewhere. And I must find him. I must find me. I have a lot to say, and um, I think that's why I started this podcast. Maybe sometimes I just wanted someone to listen. Maybe sometimes I think I'm too abrasive in person. So it kind of shuts people off for me, you know? Like this fucking crazy guy right here. I can't do it. He's too crazy. He's too loud. He's too obnoxious. He's he's intrusive. He's, you know. And I'm just I'm just being myself, man, you know, and I can't uh I change what I can and I I often look at myself and how I treat others and how I act. I don't have the right answers. No one does. There is no help coming. But there's also no, you know, There's no reason why we can't look at it in positive. Just try to see that there is beauty in this world. Beauty in the arts that we find ourselves doing on a day-to-day basis. Look around in this studio and I'm like, I need some goddamn shelves. So I can put some decoration in here. I never put anything on my walls. I need somebody to paint a mural on my wall. Um, I think that that is the next step for me. Is a uh, paint mural inside house. That'd be dope. Um, that'd be that'd be a cool actually, really cool to do. Thought about that. Maybe have a, a graffiti artist come in here and hook it up with a piece. Thought about having a graffiti artists go and do graffiti in Oakland. And write Susio talk all over the city. That'd be cool. Allegedly. I don't know if that's a crime. It's probably a crime. I always think in a criminal way. Oh, pro tip out there for all you who don't want to get your shit stolen if you go out to eat or something in the bay. Be 
Take your, I'll take all your valuable shit. You put in a backpack. You uh, put that backpack in the passenger seat behind it, behind the passenger seat, in between the passenger seat and the the back seat. And then you take your your passenger seat and you recline it a a good a good amount back, but not obvious all the way back, right? And then you you push the seat all the way back, so you pinch what's in there. And then if you don't have a a manual car, you have an electric car or an electronic car. What'll happen is like it'll be locked because they'll break in your window and they can't turn on the car, and they won't be able to move the the seat either. So they can't they can't physically yank the the backpack out of that little crevice because you've gotten in there so tight, you know. So. That's what I do. It makes me feel a little bit better. So I don't know if you guys are as paranoid as I am about getting robbed. Uh, my house got broken into by someone that was supplying me with herbs in college and cut himself, left blood all over the house. Disgusting. So ever since then, it's been a little traumatizing. So I got to make sure that I'm good. You know, but feeling good, feeling myself. I'm going to enter my own podcast into the James Beard nomination pool. You guys should too, jbf.org. If you like Sucio Talk, this is a big way of helping me out. Uh, Get it out there. Make it global. I know that I can I know that I can win one this year. I definitely can. Uh I hope I can. And if I don't, it's okay. I'll go next year. But I really want this show to be a respected member of the culinary society and I think that that's one of the ways that I could do it. It's not all the ways I could do it, but it's one of the ways I could do it, right? So I can't wait to Figure this all out and continue on this journey, you know, riding with you guys year after year. It's the third year. Uh, If you're out there, don't forget to just have fun sometimes. You know, I know know you guys are working half the time when you listen to this, but have some fun. All right. It's okay to stop. It's okay to stop early sometimes and leave. All right. Not if you got to get some shit done, but like you got to plan, you got to plan your fun. You know, as much as you plan your work, you got to plan your fun. That work hard, play hard shit, that shit is real. If you do that shit for a couple of years, whatever business or whatever you're trying to do, you will succeed. There isn't like that formula, you know, maybe six times out of 10 works. The rest of the time they probably get addicted and they fuck problems and you know. Shit like that. That's what I'm guessing. Anyway. Um here we go. Okay. Scrolled up on my list over here. Oh, right. Uh I was thinking about milk crates the other day and how they are the most versatile thing on the planet. I mean you carry dairy in them. You could store clothes in them. You could store vinegar bottles in them. Whatever you want, really. And they're great for, they're stackable. I mean, just all the the pros outweigh the cons when it comes to milk crates. You know? When it comes to milk crates, the pros outweigh the cons. All right? Um... Que mas, que mas. Going back to the Jeep. The Jeep. Uh, I saw the movie Black Adam. Horrible. All right. The effects are stupid. Half of it's CGI. It wasn't like a real movie. It wasn't like Pirates of the Caribbean CGI where they made that shit badass. It was corny. That movie was corny. Black Adam sucked. Uh, the Rock. I'm sorry that that shit, that movie sucked. 
Uh, so did Flowers of the the Ember Moon. Flowers of the Empress Moon, Ember Moon, or whatever that's in the theater right now with Leo DiCaprio, Leo Badactio, Leonardo Canactio, uh, is a piece of shit movie. Let me just tell you. I fell asleep. I didn't even fall asleep. I thought something was going to happen, but it was very anticlimactic. Like at the end of the day, they, they, I'm not even going to tell you. I'm not even going to tell you. But, I hear my neighbor moving around. I'm like, is the soundproofing not working? It's probably not working, guys. Oh, yeah, Black Adam was fucking horrible. What else? Moving over here. Uh, So, yeah, I'm just, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to continue to be here. It's going to be the third year that we're doing this. I'll see you in the fourth year. Uh, As far as uh, the last couple days, I've been hanging out with Uncle Harold over there at Moza Gather. Shout out to Angelina Hong. Um, and I know I keep saying that shit, but I keep hype. I just got to hype them. You know what I mean? Cause essentially one day I'm going to do a podcast there, uh, as well. Uh, so, except, you know, that, that, that's the goal. That's the goal at least. So we'll see what happens in the future in 2024, uh, when we can make that happen. Cause I know that, uh, this dinner last night that we did was going to be the last one for the season. So, um, and I was thinking, uh, I'm going to end this show. Uh, with an anecdote on one of our favorite guests, Andrew Chang. Um, You know, he's going on a global eating extravaganza, but he's also going on a global diarrhea extravaganza. Uh, So I want you to go ahead and email chef at sociotalk.com and tell me about the time that you ate at an awesome restaurant, really high-rated restaurant, but had the worst shits of your life. Chef at sociotalk.com. All right? This has been Sucio Talk. It's amazing that you guys are still here listening to the show. I can't wait to see uh, what you guys are going to do with your careers. I can't wait to see who I'm going to interview next and who I'm going to meet through this journey. Thank you for being with me. Uh, God, thank you for everything. I really appreciate it. Take care of my mom. Take care of my my moms, my family. Puerto Rico, Boricua, que pasó? Um, My brother Bobby, my brother Richie, my dad. Um, Bobby, como esta? Jeline, I love you. Fucking, uh, Camille, I love you. Um, fucking going, going down the line over here. Uh, my Camaro, I fucking love my Camaro too. <laughs> that shit, I survived with that shit. Charlie Apple, I love you, bro. Tyler Vorse, I love you. Um, who else? Who else? Uh, Latoya, I love you. Liliana, I love you. You guys are amazing. Uh, Abuela Ilma, uh, my cousin Guillo, my cousin Tiffany, uh, fucking all the people that I grew up with, uh, Ashley, uh, Blanca, uh, Maria Salva, fucking, um, who else, who else, who else? Jocelyn, who just turned 22. We got, we got, we got, we got, Mad family up in here. We got fucking Delma, Jorge, Joey, fucking uh, Palomo, fucking all these people that I just, you know, ran through in my life. Uh, shout out to Meriden, Murderden, uh, one of the dirtiest cities out here. Just people, people don't give a fuck. You know, they never gave a fuck. And I'm happy that that place, you know, taught me the street. So I appreciate all the things that I've learned in my life that helped me survive and help us, you know, have this show, help me do it, give me the strength that I need. And what I promise is that from now on, you know, when I'm not feeling sucio, I'm going to make sure that I leave you guys with uh, some type of content so you guys can still enjoy the show. Okay. Peace out. Thank you very much. Susio Talk Podcast. We out here. (laughs) 
See you next time, punk bitches.